Hey guys, coming at you today with two awesome recipes to help spruce up your keto ice cream, keto hot fudge and keto sprinkles. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a severe sweet tooth and I'm here to bring you the best keto desserts I possibly can and to show you how to make them so that they will come out perfect every time. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon, giving the video a thumbs up, leaving me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, two recipes to help you make the ultimate hot fudge sundae, keto hot fudge sundae. And I already have so many ice cream recipes on my channel. I have my no churn ice cream, plus another like 11 different flavors. I actually have a playlist. If you scroll on the top of my homepage and go to playlists, I have a whole ice cream playlist. So you have plenty of options for your ice cream sundaes. And then also I showed you a couple weeks ago how to make waffle bowls. So I brought one home from work. So I have that. I have some no churn ice cream I just made and we're gonna make some hot fudge and sprinkles. And both are very easy recipes. We're gonna start with the sprinkles because I want the hot fudge hot still when we're done with it. I wanna make my sundae right away. I already made some sprinkles because they do need to dry. Mine dried within about six hours. So I have those done already, but I'm gonna show you how I made them. And it's pretty fun. This is something that when I have a kid old enough, totally gonna make keto sprinkles with my kid. And one of the biggest things I can recommend is putting something over your table because dye does end up getting everywhere, you know, especially if you're working with kids. But I want my kid to not feel left out of a lot of things. So that is one thing that I'm definitely gonna be trying to stop from happening. You know, I want my kid to have the colorful birthday cake with, you know, sprinkles on it and stuff like that. So doing things like this just helps ingrain that there are options out there if you don't wanna eat the sugar-filled versions of them. I have two cups of powdered monk fruit erythritol blend. This does work with just powdered erythritol. I did not try Boca Sweet or Allulose, but I've heard they work. I'm skeptical on the Allulose because I know Allulose doesn't like to dry or harden. I know when I made a million macaroons, they're soft as hell and won't harden. So I got two cups here. I got a bunch of bowls. We're gonna make a bunch of different colors because I can never decide on just a couple colors. You can just do red, blue, and yellow if you want. You can do a combination. You can do white. You can do black. Whatever colors you have. I do have just yellow, red, and blue dye right here. So I'm gonna show you how to make all the colors with just these three. And yes, dye isn't very healthy, but can try to do natural dyes. You can use turmeric powder or add some to water and use that as the yellow. The red you can use like a beet juice if you boil some beets or red cabbage, but they're not going to be as bright and vibrant. And for these you're going to use like a drop of dye in like a whole bunch of sprinkles. So it's a little price to pay to make things kind of colorful for kids and to sell things at the bakery. People like bright colors. Like they're not gonna like go for the dull colored thing next to the bright, you know, colorful thing. So it's all aesthetic. So to our two cups of powdered sweetener, I'm gonna show you the consistency you want for your paste you're basically making. I need a teaspoon of cream of tartar but depending on how you measure your two cups of powdered sweetener, you might need more or less water. Then a uh, half teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then you're gonna need, last time when I did it, when I made the ones that I have done already, it was four and a half tablespoons of warm water. It'd be different this time because if I measured a little bit differently, I didn't weigh. So it'd be more or less. I'm gonna start with three tablespoons. The original recipe said a tablespoon and a half. So our sweetener is definitely different than regular powdered sugar. <laughs> That's for sure. 
So that was three, and it's nowhere near what we need it. Another tablespoon and a half. Still not what we need, so I'll do another half tablespoon. So that was five total. I still need a little bit more. This one looks like it's gonna be five and a half tablespoons. That's what you want. You want it kind of gloopy still. And you can add more water, but then if your line is too liquidy, it ends up being flat on one side. If it's really thick, it almost is more like a sprinkle-like. And also it dries faster the less water you put in. So if you want it to dry real fast, it's kind of a pain to use it thicker because I'll show you what happens. It's almost like cornstarch. You know how you put cornstarch and water together and you lift it up, you pinch the cornstarch and it becomes dry again? And that's what happens with the at least the powdered monk fruit erythritol blend. I'm not sure if that happens with erythritol too. Straight erythritol. Okay, so now that we got that, I'm gonna grab a spatula and a bunch of spoons. Okay. I'm also, this time I'm gonna grab toothpicks too because when I went to make my purple yesterday, I put way too much dye in it and I couldn't even save it. I can't even use like a drop out of the container for it. We may need more water, so I'm keeping my like measuring cups next to me. Another thing to keep handy is some plastic wrap because this dries out really fast. So I'm gonna put a scoop of this into each bowl. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I do wanna keep some white too. Last time I kept a little bit too much white. Do you think that's not a lot in there, but then you go and put it into a piping bag? It actually is quite a lot. This is gonna make quite a bit of sprinkles too. So you literally have to do this once and you have it for a couple of things that you wanna do. Like I like making like cosmic brownies. That's what I use the super fat ones for. Or you can make funfetti cake with my white cake recipe. I'm gonna leave that little bit. I'm gonna put it into a Ziploc bag right now. So I just use the little sandwich baggies. It is easier, I think, to use piping bags because you can get a smaller tip on the piping bag, I feel like. I cut them a little bit too big yesterday. Put it right into the bottom there. I put the hole, like I make sure the tip is right in my hand. Put it right into there. The hardest part about this is having enough sheet pans and enough room to let it all dry. <laughs> right now I have two sheet pans with sprinkles on it already and I only have this one sheet pan left. Somehow Pastry Chef only has three sheet pans. Don't know how that happens. Now we gotta get to mixing these guys. Some of them we can use the same spoons for, like the red and pink. So red, do two drops, or just a big squirt. Make sure your pink, you only do a tiny bit because you don't want it super dark. And once you've got the color you want, you can cover it with plastic wrap. What I can probably do is to make the purple, add a tiny bit of that to that. So there's our red. What I do when I have a bunch of little balls, I go like this and then rip off a little square like that. Put it right down on top. Or you can put it right into a Ziploc bag. If you want to use seven Ziplocs, you can. But you can reuse the same Ziploc for multiple colors. The orange. I'm just going to do a tiny bit of red. And a little bit of yellow. More red. You just don't want to go too far with it. So you don't want it to look the same color as your red, you know? Problem with this, it's like it's not gel and it's not liquid. There you go. Do a tiny little. Okay, there's your orange. I suggest having some place to put your spoons down too, because you don't want them on the counter. I'm just gonna put down a napkin. So yellow obviously is just a bunch of yellow. That one's easy, nice and bright. And then the next one you can do this. See, even the water's coming out of there. Isn't that crazy? The water like leaks out of the powdered monk fruit erythritol. There's your yellow. And your green. It's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue. I made mine way too dark yesterday. So I'm gonna take the cap off the blue I need some more yellow. <laughs> I just had what yellow was on the spoon, so. It's a pretty color though. It's technically not green. It's more aqua. You can have fun with this, especially with your kids. Teach them color theory. 
yellow and blue make green and let them make up their colors that they want. Fun little project. And then they get to decorate your keto ice cream with it. Get themselves some sundaes. Well, if anybody is interested, today is July 25th and I'm 20 weeks. I got a little bump. Luckily this coat I got when I wasn't like super far into my weight loss journey still fits. Green is done. That's a nice green. My last one was way darker. Now blue. Just a tiny bit. This blue is blue. Probably still going to be too much. It's super dark. It'll all depend on your dyes too. They have so many different kinds now. This is the first time I've ever seen this pack had blue, red, and pink in it. Now again, we can do, since I put a tiny bit of red in here for the purple, put a tiny bit of this blue in there and see how that turns out. Let's see what, still need a little bit more blue it looks like. Very light purpley pink. We use our blue spoon. A little bit more red. For some reason, like purple is like the hardest color to make. Now it looks like it needs more blue. <laughs> a little is dropped. Yeah, that was too much. No more red. Same thing that happened yesterday. So I say if you really want purple, buy purple. <laughs> I mean, it is purple. It's just not like a pretty purple that I like. It is what it is. Now let's see if this is pink or if it's just going to be more red. Just more red. We tried. Maybe add some of this to it. Nope. Made of brown. Two pooey colors. <laughs> we got red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Hey, let's get to piping some of these. I'll show you how to pipe today. I think that's a pretty good mix of sprinkle colors plus white. We'll start with white. And you want a really tiny tip on this. So you want to cut it smaller to start because you don't want it too big. Do a little test on your finger. Should be good. Now, like I said, the water separates from it. So you want to give it a mix. Now, you're just gonna go back and forth on the paper, applying even pressure. Try to get the lines as close together as possible if you're short on space. Cause at work I did six of these trays. We have a place to put them and multiple trays, but at home, like this recipe called for three sheet pans and I'm like, how the heck are you going to get all that onto three sheet pans? I don't really want them, the lines touching at all. You don't want super thick sprinkles. That's how you do that. I'm going to show you a colored one because the white's kind of boring on camera, huh? <laughs> Again, I take this, grab the corner of it. Make sure you have your garbage handy at all times too to throw things out. You can use your orange spoon. Make the water and dye separate from it. Another teeny tiny hole, small as you can. A lot of times I hold it like this so that I can like just put pressure on the very tip of it. it. Takes a little practice. If it's doing that a lot, that means you're running out of water in your mixture and it's getting too thick. I have to give it another mix up. You do that a couple of times until there's like not enough water left in the mixture to mix back in. And then you need to add a little bit of water into your baggie. Add to the dried up powder that's in there. You start to get like thicker in here. Yeah, it almost starts like just like cornstarch in there. It's weird. And see, so you got all that in there still, but there's like no liquid left. You can't like mix it up anymore. So that's when I take it. And see, it's like a paste now in there. It's like cornstarch. You want to take like literally a couple of drops of water, four drops of water in there. And you got to get it down from the tip of your bag to mix in with that water. Then you can probably get a couple more lines. Keep doing that until you run out of whatever you got in here. Or just have your kids go until they run out fill up all the different baggies, then you can add water while they're piping the rest of the stuff. But if you add like a ton of water in the beginning, like make these really liquidy, you're not gonna have nice lines and sprinkles. 
it like it only takes so much liquid and then it just gets too runny but you end up running out of liquid too you can also just keep adding in new colors too but doing it this way ensures that your sprinkles are really thick so that they dry pretty darn fast get another baggie you can go right on to your orange color because it's gonna look fine if you think it's a little too thick you can add a little bit of water before you put it in your bag too it is pretty thick just a couple of drops and pour it right into your bag tiny bit off the tip see that's almost too liquidy you don't want to get like it zigzagging on you now since i have no more sheet trays <laughs> i'm just gonna have to do it on this parchment here I'll do it on here just so I can transport it still. If you are running low on space, you can always go back to a couple lines in the middle where you know you got room. Even though we added that water, it's still really thick in there. That's what happens if you add too much water. <laughs> when it'll still dry, it'll just take a little bit longer. And they're a little bit thick sprinkles. Our right, on orange, we're gonna add in the yellow right into here. About all I'm gonna get on there. I'm gonna put this across the other way on our sheet tray here. And that'll be okay. Uh, it's kind of like cornstarch, so you can just literally empty the bag. They're good to go. Might be a little bit of white on there residue, but. See, if you get half a sheet of each color, you're in pretty good shape. Next, and last but not least is the blue. I like this blue and green way better than the last blue and green and the orange. Always start with less dye, then add more if you need it. Kids are going to get messy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, a little bit too much water, so you're a little bit thicker. You got to go just a little bit faster. The top is already like kind of dry. It dries really friggin' fast. At least dry to the touch. Okay. I'm gonna set these all aside and bring over my ones that are already dried so we can chop them up into sprinkles. I'm gonna clean up first though. Okay, here are our finished dried sprinkles. And because I had to like layer them, I got a bunch of the pieces already like fell onto each other but they're all nice and dry so like I said I think I had the hole a little bit too big on a lot of these and I like the colors I made today better than these colors you don't want the really thick ones kind of get rid of them first but you don't have to do that if you don't care about that you just go through and do chop 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 I love like the long pieces that just like fly. So that's like the ideal ones you want are like the nice long thin ones. You just break them into little pieces. Just want to give the kids this part to do too. Can. This is fun. These big guys out here. And then I just put them all kind of together. And some of these are stuck still. Push them all into the middle. That's one tray. You can continue to break them up however much you want to. These all came down already. You can just push them all together if you want. They'll break as they go. There's all different ways you can do it. I think doing the white just gives a little bit of contrast to it, so it's kind of nice to have the white in there. These ones were a little thick, yellow ones. I'm just 
can stay there for now. See, that's how you know they're right when they like pop off like that. And then the funnest part of this, adding all the colors together. Mixing them all up. Break them up with your fingers a little bit if they're too big. You got a bag full of sprinkles. That's fun. Now, on to hot fudge, and then we get to make a sundae. Woohoo! Now, the hot fudge recipe, super simple. And I think I'll be able to find some footage of me making my sweet and condensed milk recipe. I just made a big batch. You can make a big batch of this, keep it in the fridge for a couple of weeks. You can even freeze it and then throw it in the refrigerator when you wanted to frost it and use it for something else. And my no churn ice cream uses it, my key lime pie uses it. So I'll be linking all those throughout here. I showed you in both videos how to make the sweetened condensed milk and you want it nice and thick. So we're just gonna heat this until it's warm. We don't need it super hot, although this is hot fudge, so. I guess we want it to be hot. We don't want to cook it anymore is my point. Cause this is already done. So this is a double batch or it's a big batch I should say. Cause I have a small batch and a big batch of sweet and condensed milk. But I weighed out 14 ounces. Cause I think the double batch gives you 16 ounces. You just need this warmed up. The only other ingredients in this is semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I found that Bake Believe now is one net carb for a half an ounce. So if you use Bake Believe chips in this, the whole batch is 24 grams of net carbs. Lily's now, it used to say zero net carbs for the semi-sweet chocolate chips, now says two for a half ounce. So I've been using Bake Believe, plus they are cheaper than Lily's at Walmart. So you can find these at Walmart now. I'm doing seven ounces. The original recipe said one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips, but I used seven ounces in my recipe and it worked. So this time I weighed it out and for some reason it was a little bit more than a cup of chocolate chips. Who knows? That's why I always say just weigh ingredients because I know this is gonna work out because I weighed it once before, I made the recipe and it worked. Now I weighed out a cup of chocolate chips but it ended up being more than a cup. Don't know why. <laughs> it's already getting warm. So it's just this, chocolate chips, and two tablespoons of butter. And I'm gonna put this into a couple of mason jars and I'll let you know exactly how much it makes. These are two cup mason jars or 500 milliliter. Probably just, best bet is just to weigh it out. That way you can do it by weight so that way you know how many carbs are in each one. Cause even just like scooping some out and saying, oh, this is a tablespoon. You know how that goes, especially with peanut butter. Okay, it is starting to simmer around the edges. So I'm gonna turn that off. Put in our chocolate chips, spread them out so that they're all covered. Let that sit for a minute and then we're gonna whisk it. Okay, add in your two tablespoons of butter. This is, I already had this recipe for a while. I made my cream cheese brownies and I was testing this at home and I made this and I had my cream cheese brownies with ice cream and hot fudge on top. Mm -hmm. Today we got a waffle bowl. So normally two tablespoons is an ounce. So spatula, make sure all the chocolate's off the bottom. Delicious hot fudge. Do 12 ounces. Excited to have a bunch more of this in my refrigerator. I am a sucker for hot fudge sundaes. Basically one of my favorite combos is chocolate and peanut butter. So I also make a peanut butter sauce with just creamy natural peanut butter. I melted in some butter and some powdered sweetener until it was like a thick sauce. And when you put that over ice cream, the butter hardens. You can also use coconut oil. 
hardens on your ice cream like a fudge. So it's super delicious. So I got 22 ounces of hot fudge. So that is, I was really hoping to get 24 cause that'd be a lot easier. <laughs> so it's about two carbs per two tablespoons. So a tablespoon, a carb. That's it for that. Now it's time to make our hot fudge sundae. Hopefully this is stiff enough. Made some no churn ice cream. I got my waffle bowl, which my entire recipe using the ingredients I have for 32 pizzelles or waffle cones or waffle bowls, 10 net carbs for the whole batch. So this is like not even one. Now if you had hot water, this would scoop better. I should know better. <laughs> Make this, I'm gonna have to stop real quick and take some pictures. This isn't movie or commercial magic. Now our hot fudge. Made a little bit of whipped cream too. It's not stabilized though. I'll link a couple videos for making stabilized whipped cream if you want to keep some in the fridge. That looks so good. And whipped cream and sprinkles. So good. Yay. Delicious. Gotta take some pictures before it all melts. Ah. <laughs> okay, it's time to taste. But come on, how is this not gonna taste delicious? I mean, it is hot fudge. Mm. <laughs> some waffle bowl. Did I get some? No, yes, maybe. Gonna be so good. Wow. Good thing I took pictures. Because it's destroyed. One more bite. Mm. This is my no churn ice cream. Link that up there for you. It is delicious. I mean, it's all heavy cream, so of course it is. But I mean, if I had to guess. This whole Sunday is like, I don't know, four net carbs maybe. Delicious. <laughs> it's so good. I have not eaten lunch, of course. So bad. I eat so many desserts. Do it all for you guys. It's so good. When sprinkles on top, just make it so festive. Kids are gonna love it. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe and try it out for yourself. The hot fudge itself, plus the waffle bowls, plus you can make my brownies and the no churn ice cream. I have a summertime dessert dream for anybody who has a sweet tooth like me. Let me know in the comments below if you try out my hot fudge and how you like it. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe down in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.